Savvy entrepreneurs race to Shawnee, Oklahoma, fervently constructing oil derricks in the hopes of becoming the next Rockefeller, Getty, or Clampett. Why? Because that's where all the oil was. 52 feet of oil covered all 24 lanes inside Fire Lake Bowling Center for the qualifying rounds of the PBA Badger Open. The longest oil pattern on the PBA Tour played host to one of the most exciting chases to a TV show in recent memory. The separation in total pins from the top seed to the fifth seed was a mere 18. That's right, 18. That's an eight count off a spare. Or a strike followed by a Greek church with three on the spare attempt. Or a, you're right, why make this complicated? It was close. Sitting on top after all the shots were thrown was Bill O'Neill, making his second consecutive television appearance at the Grand Casino PBA Summer Swing. O'Neill was one and done in last week's Bear Open, and he's guaranteed to be one and done this time, as he will bowl in the title match against the survivor of the gauntlet. The only question, Will his one and done in the Badger Open result in his fifth career title? O'Neill is a former Rookie of the Year with four career PBA Tour titles, including a major in the 2010 U.S. Open. He averaged 230 to lead the field and his commitment to his game has never been higher. O'Neill will put up the best performance he can possibly muster in the title match, no matter whom he faces. One potential opponent is PBA Hall of Famer Pete Weber, the man who shares the all-time record for most major titles, 10, shares the third spot on the all-time PBA Tour titles list with 37, and owns his own spot in bowling lore because, simply, he is. Undoubtedly one of the best ever, and debatably the best ever, Weber finds a way to contend in every single tournament, defying the laws of bowling, physics, and common sense when he shifts into that gear no one else has. You know, the one in which lane conditions, opponents, and pressure don't seem to apply to him. His ability to shut everything else out and throw perfect, precise shots when he needs them most is unmatched. He'll have to win twice to capture the Badger Open title, but it's hard to pit anyone against Pete Weber in a one-on-one -on -one situation and call Weber the underdog. From a man who's amassed one of the best careers all time to a man who is widely considered to have the potential to do something similar, third seed Marshall Kent is looking to win his first official PBA Tour title. We say official because he actually did win a PBA Tour International event, the Brunswick Euro Challenge earlier this year, but the summer swing marks the official debut of Kent as a PBA member. We've already seen Kent bowl on television in the 2013 U.S. Open and the PBA Scorpion Championship from World Series of Bowling 5, and it's obvious to even a casual observer, Kent is on the verge of his first official title. The strongest piece of evidence would be the unofficial title he's already won, but that's a debate for another time. With a thumb that was quite literally falling apart as the qualifying rounds wore down, Kent impressively persevered and maintained his position in the middle of the field. Will his thumb hold up as he tries to win three matches for the title? The fourth-seeded Brian Valenta makes his television debut on the strength of a clutch finish in the final game of qualifying to lock himself into the opening match on TV. We see a lot of two-handed bowling on television these days, but Valenta will give us a glimpse at a completely different style of two-handed bowling. With his thumb in the ball and an innate and honed ability to loft over trouble, you're in for some excitement if you've never seen him bowl. Valenta, who famously won his first PBA Tour regional event with a black beauty in 2013, will get his first chance at a PBA Tour national title in the Badger Open. Spoiler alert, he will not be throwing a black beauty. He will undoubtedly engage the crowd as long as he's still bowling. Can he climb the ladder all the way to the title, or will he succumb to the same fate as so many others in their television debuts? We'll find out right away as Valenta opens the show against fifth seed Mika Koivuniemi, who has won a title and bowled a 300 game on, I think, nine continents now, and yes, I realize there are only seven. Six if you prefer Eurasia. The real number is 21 countries. 
This man has won titles in more countries than almost all other people in the world have visited. 13 of those titles are PBA Tour Triumphs, three of which are majors, including the $250,000 Tournament of Champions in 2011. Since then, he just keeps winning. He earned three titles internationally last season and one already this season in the Brunswick Ballmaster Open in his home country of Finland. He'll have to win four times if he's going to get his first U.S.-based title since the TFC, but there's no question he has the ability to do it. Whoever emerges from the second through fifth seeds to the title match will have to contend with a highly determined Bill O'Neill, whom Mike J. Laneside cornered in the latest edition of Having Beers with Bowlers. Mike J. Laneside, welcome to Beers with Bowlers and welcome Bill O'Neill to the big show. I, I think you, you, you're on my top ten list of people I'd, I'd want to have a beer with. Well, thank you. I, I wish I could have a beer with you. This is this is water, yeah, but we can. Uh, we'll pretend it's beer. <laughs> uh, you um, are among the, the interesting personalities out here. Your name comes up quite a bit, on and off the lanes, whether it's in competition or just the crazy things that happen when you're out here on events. And, and I really enjoy you and your father. What is the uh, O'Neill Thanksgiving like? Uh, it's nothing but ball busting. It's, that's, in, that's all of our family get-togethers. That is uh, Tuesday when he comes over to my house to watch my son. He you know, has to pick on me about something before I leave, and it's back and forth, and it's just nonstop. So uh, if you don't like my personality, then blame it on him. And you've come such a long way, not only on the lanes, but off the lanes, and your personality just kind of jumps out there. Um, when did you really start picking up the confidence to, to not only you know, assert yourself in your personality, but also to have your bowling game shine through? When did that start? Well, uh, in high school, I was a really shy kid. Super shy, you know, I was uh, overweight, pimple face, you know, the whole bit, so I was real shy. And I decided to go away to college. So I went away to Michigan, I didn't have the security blanket of home, and had no other option but to, to, to start, you know, growing a little bit, be a little more outgoing and try to make my own friends and it just, uh, you know, kind of grew from there. Well, it's interesting to yeah. be a, a part of a, a group like that. And and, uh, and then I go to your, actually, it's a unique friendship that you have with, with Jason Belmonte. Yeah. And, and a memorable moment that came up at the end of the Barbasol Tournament of Champions. Yeah. Uh, tell us about that. Well, I wish I could take full credit for it. It wasn't it wasn't my idea, it was Tommy Jones' idea. And he said, listen, if Wes wins, I'm gonna get him with the shaving cream, but if Belma wins, you do it. I said, all right, perfect. So one thing led to another, and I was just hoping I didn't screw it up. I was, <laughs> when he was standing there, I was just trying to find a way to get either around him or in between him to where he wouldn't see me, and I didn't hit Kimberly at the same time. So it, was, uh, it ended up working out perfect, and up until the last moment, I thought I was gonna screw it up. Talking about your bowling game, and, and as we mentioned, you've kind of matured a little bit. Uh, what are things that you are working on right now to even uh, take yourself uh, from where you're at to, a, to, a, to the you next know, level? Right, I've been uh, struggling a little bit the last two years to get like a really consistent stretch of tournaments to where I make a bunch of shows like I used to, and I, I just I haven't been able really to do it. I get close a lot. I have a lot of top tens in the hunt a lot. I just I haven't been able to really. You know, lead tournaments or get second or third. And I, you know, I'm always, if I make a show, it's always the bottom. And I'm just trying to uh, just clean up a lot of small errors. And I think sometimes when you try to add so many different pieces to your game, you end up kind of forgetting your what you're your best at. And then you end up when it's there, you can't capitalize on it because now I'm trying to work on, you know, having a straight game and, and being soft in my hand and getting around it. And the whole, you know, trying to develop all these tools instead of just focusing on what I'm what I'm really good at. Beers with Bowlers continues. Mike J. Lane side with Bill O'Neill. Uh, you, you mind if I take a sip? Not at all. In fact, Sam, uh, Sam Adams I was, water. I was starting to get parched. Are you uh, are you a good husband? I would hope so. I mean, I think I probably travel a little bit more than the uh, average good husband, but it's my job. And uh, you know, when, when I'm home, I, I do all the laundry and I do the cooking and I do the cleaning. Uh, so I, I think as far as that goes, I think I, I, do, I do pretty well. All right, and then just totally kind of off the sports topic, and I'll just kind of phrase it widely. Uh, a movie, uh, a book, 
a political event? What, what, what's something that you've recently learned about that kind of just piqued your interest? A, a pop culture item, a news item? Is there something out there that outside of bowling that's piquing your interest? Well, I did. I did learn that I actually can read if I if I actually sit down and do it. So I read. Uh, this is actually a little while back. I read The Lone Survivor, which is now a movie. So, and that's my 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 line to my wife now is I always wanted to say, ah, the book's way better than the movie. So I finally got the opportunity to do that, and even if the movie was way better than the book, I was still saying, ha, ah, the book is way better than the movie. All right, Bill O'Neill, thanks for stopping by. Having beers with bowlers, I'm Mike J. Lane. Thank Cheers. you. The blue gold that is the 52-foot crude is applied to the specially installed lanes inside the Grand Event Center at the Grand Casino Resort and Hotel for the five-man stepladder finals of the Badger Open. Bill O'Neill. Pete Weber, Marshall Kent, Brian Valenta, Mika Koivuniemi. This brings us to a painfully obvious pun. Who will strike it rich and take home the Badger Open trophy? Find out Tuesday, June 17th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on CBS Sports Network. Log in to Extra Frame immediately following the telecast for the Badger Open postgame show, featuring a trophy and check presentation and interview with the winner.